When we left off, we had a bouncing ball that we had added some user control to and uh, actually changed uh, the style of the user control. I'll show you that in just a minute. Uh, today, my goal is to add collision with an object uh, to this bouncing ball. So that's what we're going to try. So just as a reminder, our code here, this is the code that uh, sets the ball going and bounces it off all the walls, keeps track of its um, x velocity and y velocity here and changes the x position and the y position by that velocity in the vector. And then I was fooling around with the these event uh, blocks, the when up arrow key pressed, when down arrow key pressed, and I decided to simplify what I was doing. I decided we would just make the up arrow make the ball move faster in the up direction and the down arrow move faster in the down direction. So you see the way it's bouncing now. If I press the up arrow, it starts moving up. If I press the down arrow, it starts moving down. The trick about that is that if you get it going really fast, it's hard to change it because you might um, you might be pressing the up arrow when it's going up or the down arrow when it's going down and not um, actually changing uh, much. So I also put in a break. And I'll show you that here. Right here, when space key is pressed, set the vectors numbers for x and y to 2 and 2. So I, I hit the space, and it goes slow. So if it gets going too fast, I've got a way to uh, to deal with it. I also did the same thing with the left and right. So if I want to move it more left, I press the left arrow. More right, I move press the right arrow. So it's a little funny, but you can control this ball. It keeps moving. It has momentum, but you can still control it pretty well. So I'll put the brake on there. Now today, I want to add an object here that this ball will collide with. So I'm going to grab a new sprite. Uh, let's see. I think we'll grab this flower shape. And maybe we'll just shrink that a little bit. Now, the first thing you might notice is that it looks like all our scripts have disappeared. That's because I've selected this sprite, and scripts are associated with sprites. So if I click back on the ball, all our script is still there. And there's a spot where we could put scripts in that are associated with this flower. In this case, I'm still going to work in the, in the ball script because I want to check if the ball is touching that flower shape. And I want to do that here in this forever loop. So every time through the loop, it's checking to see. And if it is, I want it to bounce off. I can do that with in this sensing category with this touching block. So right now it says touching mouse pointer. I can just choose touching flower shape. Any sprite you add to your uh, game will uh, show up here um, in, in this list down here. So to bounce it when it collides with this flower shape, all we have to do is add an if statement. So if the ball is touching the flower shape, then what do I want to do? Well, I think in this case, I'm going to keep it simple, and I'm just going to bounce both the, um, the x and the y part of the vector. So I do that down here by multiplying by negative 1. I'm just going to steal this block here. I'll duplicate that, stick it here. And we'll do the same with the Y and stick it there. So that's looking good. I just want to fit this into my forever loop here. I think what I'm going to do is pull this out, put that at the top, and then stick that all back in my forever loop. OK. Let's just get a bigger picture view here. So that's my, my whole script now for my forever loop. It changes the X and Y. It checks if it's touching the flower. If it, if it is, it bounces both on the x and the y parts of the vector. And then it goes on and checks whether it's touching an edge of the screen and does the appropriate bouncing there. So let's see what we get when we run this. I'm just going to let this bounce around a few times, see if it'll hit it by itself. Aha, there we go. So it bounces off that flower. It can detect that it's touching it, detects the collision, and bounces off. We could do other things. We don't have to necessarily bounce when something collides. We could make it explode and disappear. We could figure out how to do that. We could make, um, we could make the flower shape move if we wanted to rather than the ball. Uh, so we've got a lot of choices there. 
in this game, now I've got some control of the ball. I've also got a break I can put on, and I've got uh, something to collide with. I could say every time I bounce off this flower shape, I get a point and see how many points I could get in a certain time period. And I'd pretty much have a game. Actually, let's, let's do that. Let's put in a score variable. And at the beginning of our game, we're going to set score to zero. And then every time we do touch the flower shape, we're going to change the score by one. And we won't put in the timer aspect right now. I can show you how to do that next time. But let's, uh, let's watch the score up here and see how this goes. I got one. Ooh, let's get back there. There's one, two, three, four. Oh, I'm in a good pattern here. Five, six. So I guess to win this game, I'd want to find a way to make it bounce the fastest I possibly could. But you have, you know, maybe not the best game in the world, but you have something that has all the elements of a game, a way to keep score, a goal, and some, some user control. We'll see how we can make this game a little more interesting next time.